Madden NFL 23 is live for all players and there are a bunch of new and returning Madden players alike. Now is a perfect time to talk tips you definitely want to know so you can crush your friends, roommates and siblings alike on the gridiron. Let's get started. Now I was really caught off guard by skill based passing because you know usually Madden feels like a copy of the previous year but with a little touch up of paint. Skill based passing however fundamentally alters the dynamic of your offense and it's been a pleasant surprise to see. Basically the idea is with skill based passing you have a tighter control of ball placement which is really clutch when it comes to specific scenarios like leading your receiver, throwing in a tight window low and away from the cornerback or if you have a size mismatch like Kyle Pitts or Travis Kelsey tossing one high and out of reach from the defender. There are three options in handling skill based passing. One is by using the precision passing meter which handles the accuracy of your pass. The other and it's my preferred choice has the meter simply dictate your throw power. Holding down the button slings out a bullet pass and anything less is basically considered a touch pass. I've made throws in the past Madden games that would be considered a lob but they were actually touch passes in Madden 23 which shows that the range of the touch pass is significant. However, I know some of you guys, particularly older Madden players, you might not like this change and that's okay. There's an option to simplify by using the classic gameplay when it comes to passing. Madden lets you mess with the camera angles on both sides of the ball. If you find that the default angle isn't quite what you're looking for, just press the D-pad to mess with it and you can have a starting point closer to your QB or further away giving you an eagle eye view of most of the field. I tend to mess with this more on offense, but on the defensive side of the ball you can even flip the camera over to change perspectives and hone in on a defensive player. It can take a little bit of adjusting, but also offers you potentially more control. Your instinct may be to sprint whenever you have the ball in your hands, but it is not always the best idea. Sprinting negatively affects your ability to make cuts or perform other moves at their fullest, such as jukes and spins. Instead of constantly holding down R2 or the right trigger, use it in the open field or right after you make a cut through the hole as a running back or a kick returner. It will help you get defenders out of position as you turn on the afterburners and leave them whiffing on a tackle. Sometimes your ball carrier may get stood up on a tackle and you'll be prompted to mash the A button or X if you're on PlayStation to get out of it. You should know that this is optional and while doing so might wiggle you free to keep running, it also puts you at greater risk of fumbling the ball. This will more rarely happen against the CPU, but if you're playing a human opponent, you may be best to settle for the yards you got and not try to break out for more. To give up on the play in the middle of the QTE, you can press X or square on PlayStation to go to the ground and prevent disaster. In Madden, usering relates to the defender that you decide to play as. You can change this at any point, even mid-play, but you should pick a position you can play with skill. For example, if you find yourself late to react to crossing routes and double moves, you shouldn't be playing corner or else you'll become a liability to your team. The safest position in most cases, for those who feel they have a lot to learn on defense, is the defensive tackle position on the line as your job will usually just be to plug up the inside running lanes, leaving the CPU to handle coverage, pass rush, and spying the QB. Calling chunk plays is as good in real life as it is in Madden. You've got to establish the run to set up the pass. If you can successfully break off two or three runs early from the same formation or even with the same play, coming out in the same formation later could get your opponent guessing wrong that you're about to run it again. This makes for the perfect time to set up the play action pass from the same formation. It'll look exactly like what they're expecting 
right up until the moment that they've bit on the play fake and you pulled out the rug under them. Now you're bombing the ball over their heads to your wideout on a deep post. Trust me, it looks as good as it feels too. Uh, yeah. I usually avoid talking about Ultimate Team, but understanding Ultimate Team and whether or not it is right for you is important. You know, the people who love this mode, they've already sunk in a hundred bucks and they have their Mutt Team at about the mid 80s right now in overall ranking. Other players completely disregard Mutt and they want nothing to do with it. Usually for you guys that watch my Madden videos and for those of you watching this right now, you tend to be the latter group and I understand that completely. So feel free to talk to me in the comments and let me know what you'd like to see change in Ultimate Team in the future. But for those of you curious, let's break it down. Ultimate Team in short is basically a mode where you get to build your own team from every NFL player by starting off with the crappy ragtag team and taking on challenges of increasing difficulty. You get players through packs, think of it like collecting trading cards, and you can then pop your cards in and out of your lineup in different ways, crafting a team with your game style. You can trade these cards, sell them for different kinds of currency, and you can use your lineup to take on different missions and challenges. Successfully beating challenges will earn you XP, stars, and sometimes specific cards. When you feel comfortable enough with your team's strengths, you can hop in online and challenge other ultimate teams. Also, be sure to take on each challenge one at a time, and if you're up to it, start at the highest difficulty possible, which usually isn't bad in the first few minutes in the set of challenges. Make sure to always aim for the optional objective as well, as that will give you maximum stars upon completion, letting you get better rewards. Field passes are completely new to Madden, but may be familiar to anyone who has seen the free tracks on certain battle passes like in Fortnite, Destiny 2, or even Warzone. It's a nice addition in Madden 23's live service model, giving players that don't want to shell out cash in Ultimate Team a decent option to grind for XP, and in return, get a smattering of coins and occasionally packs or even solid standout players. There are different kinds of field passes, so be sure to check the timer and get some XP in on the ones that might end soon. Madden 23 isn't for everyone, but it's worth a look, particularly if you haven't played Madden in a few years. You might be pleasantly surprised by some of the changes to the core gameplay. Let me know if you're playing Madden 23 and what guides you would like to see next. If you plan on skipping Madden this year, sound off in the comments. Be sure to tell me what it would take for Madden to earn your hype back for you to hop back onto the field. Now keep an eye out for our official review coming out early next week as well, and go Raiders.